Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm going to be looking at, well, I'm going to be looking at space planes. This is your standard rocket plane. Really simple to build, it's just a bit of fuselage, you know, a little uh, cargo bay, a couple of uh, engines on the back, just the little kind. We don't need huge amounts of thrust for this bit of fuel, RCS, wings, and you know what? It was really you know, it pretty much flies beautifully. I did not have to work particularly hard to make this thing fly and indeed glide safely back to base. And uh, that is important because what we want to do is take this and turn it into a space shuttle style launcher. Now, space shuttle style launcher is one of the hardest things you can build. You may think it's simple, right? You can take a NASA style, you know, you can copy the NASA design, you can put a big fuel tank on there with a fuel line running into the, the engines on that. You can put solid rocket boosters on the side to loft the whole lot up and everything should just work magically, right? I mean, if it works for NASA, it should work in Kerbal Space Program. How hard can rocket science be anyway? Well, let's find out. Okay, here we are, ready to go, and off we go 100%, and things are looking pretty good. Unfortunately, we are starting to pitch down, despite my best attempts to pitch up. You see, what's happening is we have asymmetric thrust, and with asymmetric thrust comes rotation, and uh, I'm going to crash unless I ditch this whole thing. But it's actually pretty good because I did manage to escape from this without destroying it and uh, yeah, bring it back to a nice landing. Okay, so back in the hangar we can use the center of mass and the center of thrust indicators to show what's going on. Actually, it looks pretty close here that we have a center of uh, thrust and a center of mass that are pretty uh, lined up. But you notice as the fuel gets uh, sucked away from those solid rocket boosters, the center of mass moves towards the spacecraft. Similarly, as I suck the liquid fuel and oxidizer out, it gets moved closer this way uh, as well. So what you're going to deal with is a center of thrust and a center of mass that are not only going to be offset but they're going to be changing over time. You need to account for this and you need to compensate for this torque. Now I can make some adjustments to my center of thrust vector by perhaps moving these solid rocket boosters. Normally you'll find the center of mass is actually closer to the spacecraft so by attaching those solid rocket boosters squarely to the side we've actually put the center of thrust off offset. So yeah, I'm just uh, doing this. I have to rotate it to this horizontal position. Uh, that might overcompensate a little, but you know what? Let's see what happens when we try to fly this thing. Actually, I need to adjust the orientation so we are actually going vertically. Okay, test number two, I guess. And this is not an improvement at all. However, at least it wasn't an entirely fatal endeavor. Look, everybody survived! Let's go back to the boffins in the vehicle assembly building and, uh, well, let's undo that change first. So, as I said, to make this work, I'm doing this in the vehicle assembly building and you kind of need to make everything... Uh, you need to do everything horizontally because that's the way the symmetry works. So I'm going to put this back here and just try to make it a little less extreme in my rotation. Okay, so what else? We can do the cheap get out of jail free change, which is add a whole bunch of advanced SAS units. These will provide torque, which will offset the torque introduced by your uh, engines. It is pretty much cheating. The other option is adding lots of uh, RCS engines or Werner thrusters, which work, the linear versions work exceptionally well since you can just plaster those all over the external. Oh, yeah, this isn't going to work. Back to the space plane hangar for some more adjustments. Let's make this thing go vertically. Now, see, these will keep me flying straighter for longer. The question is, at what point will the rock asymmetric thrust overcome the torque of these. We're off to a good start. Once again, we're going in a straight line and in fact we are accelerating upwards. I'm not sure we're accelerating quite as fast as I would like. I am beginning to suspect that those uh, solid rocket boosters 
are perhaps a little inadequate for the task at hand. I may have to go to the next step up. But uh, yeah, we're, we're, we are accelerating upwards and we're not experiencing a huge amount of torque. Now, if you look in the bottom left corner, you have the roll, yaw and pitch indicator. The one you're really concerned about is the pitch indicator. If that's near the middle, then you have lots of room to apply uh, pitch control. And you see, as soon as I ditch those, my pitch control kind of starts to max out. And yeah, this thing is not working. I can try to roll around this center of gravity to stop it, but yeah, this is not gonna work. It's time for me to ditch this party and yeah, bye bye fuel tank. Sorry if I'm dropping you on people on the ground. Uh, I think actually two kilometers up, I might be too high to actually see that thing hit the ground. It is always fun. I just gotta get control of this aircraft First, I think we have control. Let's see, is that gonna hit? Oh, come on! I saw the shadow of that thing land, about to land on the runway and it evaporated. Well, nevertheless, I can, of course, bring this into a safe and controlled landing, which is always a good sign. Bill and Bob are certainly getting lots of testing done on the, the abort procedures. Look, brilliant! Moving swiftly on, we have identified a number of shortcomings. So what we really want to do here is we've got to fix the center of thrust, center of mass issue. We're going to need bigger solid rocket boosters, so we should really consider getting rid of those. But more importantly, we should take a page out of the space shuttle's design. Now, if you look at the space shuttle, those big space shuttle main engines are not mounted straight along the center line of the space shuttle. They're actually pointed through the center of mass, which means they have to angle upwards. Actually, the Space Shuttle main engines, which are some of the best rocket engines ever designed, they not only do they fire directly through the center of mass, but they also can adjust their position by up to 10 degrees in both directions. So uh, they have a very large gimbal range compared to any engine in the Kerbal Space Program system. So yeah, I've mounted those at an angle. It's not quite through the middle, but it's certainly gonna help. The other thing I can do to help here is to move the center of mass forwards and therefore reduce the angle which is it's subtending okay i gotta find a place to mount this as far forward as possible uh that might work uh, i don't know if i moved it very far but it, it does help a little every little helps and of course all those um all those things all those sas units on the front are gonna help even more I think that might just give us a slight advantage in the stability stakes. No, no, yes, we should think about bigger engines. We do have these bigger SRBs from the, of course, from the, the NASA expansion that we had. So I'm going to put these on the front here, double them up, stick them on the side. This now makes them bigger than the external tank, which means they don't look anything like the real space shuttle. But that's okay, because neither does the aircraft. Also, I think we're going to need more solar cells, because I'm realizing that those uh, SAS units are going to be taking a lot of power, so we should put a bunch of solar cells on. It doesn't matter how many of those we put on, because they do not actually generate any drag or any physics if you use the single panel models. Important trick to know there. Although if you are using Ferrum Aerospace, it's entirely possible that these parts are in fact getting physics applied to them. So. Uh, I'm not using Ferrum Aerospace in this case, but we can think about it later. Now, the reason I'm not using uh, Ferrum Aerospace is because I was originally planning to do a little mod overview looking at the major shuttle implementations that you can get as mods. There's a Tiber Cyberdyne, there's a Kerbal Shuttle Orbiter, uh, whatever, and there's a Component Space Shuttle. And none of those work particularly well with uh, Ferrum Aerospace. They all seem to suffer from Infiniglide. In fact, I managed to get KSO up to orbital velocity at under 10 kilometers just by turning on SAS. Okay, we're ready to go. We've arranged our launch, our, our staging, and so far we're so good. So far, so good. Now, uh, we are banking over a little. We've got pitched all the way up. 
Uh, this is not getting any better because those big engines, those big engines I can't adjust the thrust on. Those are going to keep thrusting and because the mass is going down, the torque is going to get higher and higher. Turning on the reaction control system is not helping against the inevitability of this uh, this bank over. So I think at some point, maybe if I turn this over, I can start pulling the spacecraft up. So at least I have options. You know what they say about altitude being life insurance. If I can at least let these main engines burn out, then I will have a better chance of exiting this situation without, well, without destroying my entire spacecraft. Okay, and we are actually gaining altitude again. That's a good sign. We're traveling at decent velocity, and there we go, ditch. Oh, okay, well, not the cleanest separation, and in fact, also because we have those engines mounted asymmet off center, we get rotation in the aircraft. The good news is the aircraft is neutrally stable, so if I just cut the power, it naturally brings me back under control. And you see, this is where not having that 10 degree of gimbal motion in the engines really starts to become a problem. Because, you know, when you have those engines and they run out of fuel, then that represents quite a big change in the thrust vector and the main engines need to respond to this. So, what I'm, okay, what I'm doing here is I'm just moving those engines a little closer to the center of mass and pointing at the ground. Point it at the sky, otherwise you will not be going to space today. Okay, so by moving those engines in a little, that again should help with the center of mass. And that's looking not any better at all. In fact, this is getting worse. <laughs> I need to get out of here very quickly. And I'm completely losing control of this thing. Ah oh dear. I'm doomed, they're all dead. Oh, actually they're not dead. Well, moving swiftly on, clearly I overcompensated with the SRB positioning, so I will try and adjust them downwards, trying to find the sweet spot where they will carry me into space and not to my certain death. Uh, or uncertain, at least certain abort mode, since death was not on the cards in either case. That's a little better. Again, oh. Just try to rotate. What I'm trying to do is find the correct rotation. There we go. Rotated them about five degrees. That lifts them a little above the center line of the tank and should help a little. Okay. I think we're set there. And the other thing I'm realizing is that because of the position of the sun, we may not have we may not have power to these uh, all of these solar panels. So we may not have light on them. Let's put some there. I'm just going to splat our bunch of these around the external tanks so that we can make sure that the these uh, SAS units are always getting the power that they so desperately crave in their vain attempt to keep this rocket straight. As I said, using these really is quite a shortcut, but uh, I want to make this happen in a single video. And clean away. We are stable, we're not rotating. Our pitch indicator is actually showing a small amount of pitch correction needed, but the reaction control or the reaction wheels are in fact keeping this thing under control. Sweet. So we are ascending gracefully into the heavens. Bill and Jebediah are starting to feel hopeful that this crazy plan might just work. And what you should really be getting from this was that the space shuttle concept of a space plane slapped on the side of a rocket was a crazy plan. And while it did work, it did require a huge amount of engineering problems to be solved. And uh, you see that I haven't quite solved them because I don't think I'm burning enough fuel in those engines. I'm still accelerating too slowly. And soon, as soon as these rockets burn out, I'm going to be uh, falling back to the planet Kerbin, I suspect. But yeah, the space shuttle seemed is really a poor idea in many, many ways. And there we go. We are still moving upwards. We're still trying desperately to beat out gravity. Gravity, I won't let you beat me. No, 
unfortunately, I have two of these tiny little landing engines trying to lift a whole orange tank worth of fuel against the inevitability that is gravity. Yes, uh, gravity, it's the law. Well, uh, good news is at least we should be able to test another abort mode. The bad news is that if we want to put bigger engines on this space plane, then it will probably shift the center of mass and make it fly terribly again. So I'm going to have to come up with another solution. Anyway, uh, time to say goodbye to this dead weight. Oh, yes, I uh, should have probably cut my engines before I did that. Okay, let's see if we can bring this thing back under control before we plummet into the ground. Ha! Brilliant! This is this is a really nice... This plane flies so well. It's just a shame we're trying to hook it on the back of this giant rocket, which makes it fly terribly. We even managed to fly it in a complete, you know, controlled descent and uh, return it to the runway. Anyway, yes, so because we can't really adjust this space plane much, we have to take what I would like to call the Energia, or the Buran approach. We're going to stick a rocket on the bottom here. Now, mainsail would be an obvious choice, but I think I'm going to go smaller. I'm going to go with, if I can find it, where is, where is, I have, I have, the skipper, where's the skipper? It's, it's there, it's right there, God, hiding from me. There we go. Now, the skipper will help balance things out, but I don't think we need it early on, so I've set it up so that it will only fire once we've ditched the main solid rocket boosters. Because I, otherwise I would have to adjust the position of the SRBs. And, and we take off. Excellent. We are taking off using the solid rocket boosters for lifting most of the mass, and we have then a, uh, this little rocket on the side providing some stability control. Now, a stock Kerbal Space Program install will also include the Lear Star, which is very similar to this in design. It uses uh, radial engines, for which are offset to provide the thrust, and those have had their thrust limiter set appropriately. Thrust limiting is going to be a very important part of this ascent, because it lets us tune the amount of torque we're seeing. But so far, we're just ascending beautifully, rather beautifully I'd like to say, on these giant solid rocket boosters. Of course, firing the solid rocket boosters early on is good because they have lower specific impulse and you get better efficiency on your rockets if you fire off the low specific impulse fuel first and then leave the higher specific impulse stuff for the later parts of the journey. And there we go. And we managed to separate those things without destroying the spacecraft and get this engine firing. Now, how are we doing? We are feeling a bit of... I'm having to push the nose down in this. This is not a typical shuttle-style ascent, because normally the shuttle would be ascending upside down with the fuel tank above it. I'm not even going to try rolling this, because I think that having the... Having everything off-center like that will probably lead to some sort of un undesired motion, let's say. So yeah, I've throttled back that main engine just to make sure that everything is stable. And I'm going to keep throttling that to make sure that I get all the way into orbit. The danger is that I might have to throttle too far back on it. And I won't have the necessary thrust to get into orbit. So I've got to balance these two features. And Hopefully, I will continue to pick up speed and uh, eventually put this glorious piece of technology, this uh, giant Rube Goldberg-style machine, into orbit. There's a story I read that uh, this Russian, the Soviet shuttle, only came about because while the rocket scientists at the space agency thought it was a ridiculous idea and couldn't understand why the Americans were doing this crazy you know, space shuttle design. Uh, the people obviously uh, in the government were like, we need to have this, we need to see why they're doing this, you need to test this. So they went and you know built it and flew it once and then never flew it again. But hey, they did develop their energy or rocket and the engines and of course it wasn't completely without technology but yeah, ultimately, the Space Shuttle was one of the most expensive spacecraft ever to fly. In fact, I've liked to point out that based on back-of-an-envelope calculations, 
if you fueled the Falcon rocket with the dollar bills, it would still be cheaper than flying the space shuttle. It was a magnificent vehicle capable of doing things that no other spacecraft could do and will be able to do for a long time. But it turns out that it wasn't what was actually needed, except for building the space station. It was essential to building the space station, although I would say they would probably have come up with other solutions if they were necessary. So it looks like I am going to in fact make it into space. My ascent trajectory is a little shallow, but all the same, you have, one thing to be careful of is that your thrust vector is not going to be along your facing vector because you have one of these sets of engines firing downwards. And as we switch into time accelerated mode, you can see that I have indeed successfully built a spacecraft which launches rather like that crazy contraption that is the space shuttle. Obviously, it's still a long way from a real space shuttle because it carries this extra engine on the external tank. Uh, the space shuttle carried its, you know, recovered all the engines so they could be reused. In this case, we're going to ditch it on the surface and, uh, yeah, it'll be unfortunate that we'll lose it. But it does take a lot of effort to design a spacecraft which will work. And I just tried to do this live, more or less live. If you want to get rid of that external engine, then you need to have bigger engines on that space plane, possibly a third engine at a different angle so you can adjust the engine groupings and adjust the relative thrust to make sure the torque remains under control. But that would require redesigning and rebalancing the space plane. We all know how much trouble that can be. Anyway, with the engine returning to the surface, it's time for me to say I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.